Before we jump into the video today, I just want you all to know that I've created a brand new channel. It's an analog horror channel focused on Lovecraftian horror. So if you dig that sort of thing and you need a good scare, check it out. Well, it's been one hell of a science week, hasn't it? With the news that the team behind the first image of the M87 supermassive black hole was set to announce something huge this past Thursday. Since our initial speculation video on what that announcement could have been did so well, here we are again for round two. I'm Eric Malachite, and today on Science Get, we're talking about the first ever image of the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, Sagittarius A. The black hole at the center of our fair galaxy has at long last been imaged using the Event Horizon Telescope Network, which is a collaboration of Earth-based radio telescopes that function as an Earth-sized interferometer, capable of detecting the intense radiation that comes from these beyond stellar behemoths. And here it is, the first ever publicly released image of Sagittarius A star. Comments on the previous video in this series, I guess you could call it, revealed the possibility that the object at the center of our galaxy might not have been a black hole at all, but rather a strange collection of dark matter. However, with the reveal of this image, we can almost certainly put those theories to rest, as the evidence for Sagittarius A star being a supermassive black hole is now fairly overwhelming. What's really interesting about this image is that, from our perspective here on Earth, Sagittarius A star has about the same visible radius as the M87 supermassive black hole does. That's crazy, because as I mentioned in the original video on this subject, M87 is much much more massive than our supermassive black hole. In fact, it's about 1600 times larger. But due to how huge M87 is, and it being 2000 times farther from us than Sagittarius A, it appears to be around the same size as the much smaller Sagittarius A star. In fact, the outer reaches of this accretion disk have orbits far larger than the orbit of Pluto and Charon around our Sun. When the EHT was observing M87, they noticed that the radiation the supermassive black hole emitted was fairly stable, meaning not much changed even during an entire week of observation time. Not Sagittarius A, though. The EHT team had to keep their eyes peeled for changes that could range from just under several hours to 5 to 15 minute intervals. That's insane. The reason for this is because the black hole is just spinning way too fast. This leads us to discuss what's different about this image when compared to its M87 cousin first showed off in 2019. You know, besides it being a different black hole. The new image of Sagittarius A star is not just one image. Because of how often conditions around the black hole would change, the team decided to create a composite image for this first reveal. The end result is an image that is more of an average of all the data that the EHT has taken in from Sagittarius A and the time that the team has been studying it. We're talking about tens of thousands of different images that have been averaged together, which, you know, took a ton of processing power utilizing a supercomputer. I wonder how much I could cut down on rendering times if I just borrowed one of those. Another surprising detail that the Event Horizon Telescope team revealed is that Sagittarius A star actually rotates along an axis that is pointing straight at us. Yeah, you heard that right. Mmm, Jimbo, it's coming right for us. Okay, it's more like it's roughly pointing in our direction. Not exactly. But what would that mean for the Earth if Sagittarius A ever developed relativistic jets again? Has its axis always been pointed at Earth? Hmm. Yep, I'm not sleeping tonight. Furthermore, the black hole's rotation appears to be moving counterclockwise. Regina Caputo, astrophysicist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, said this in relation to the reveal. What blows my mind is that we're seeing it face on. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little concerning. <laughs> Caputo was previously involved with work that led to the reveal of the Fermi Bubbles, two giant regions of ionized dust and gas believed to be left over from a more active phase of Sagittarius A's life. This region extends for 50,000 light years above and beneath the center of our galaxy, but as we observe them from Earth, they appear to be swirling around the black hole rather than the head-on look that we have at the supermassive black hole from Earth. The big question I have, given this bombshell of a reveal, is does this create a problem for theories on how the Fermi bubbles were formed? Time will tell, 
but it will be interesting to see what the EHT team has in store for us in the future. Speaking of which, thanks to some more sophisticated means of conducting these observations after a two-year hiatus in 2019 and 2020, the EHT team has stated that observations now take far less time than they once did, which should allow them to produce images at much higher resolutions. So, quick thought, since it has been revealed that Sagittarius A does not align with the axis of the Milky Way itself, so the galactic plane, is it possible that some event, perhaps the thing that led to the Fermi bubbles forming in the first place, could have knocked it off its axis? Food for thought. That's all I've got for you today, but be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz. Like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and share this video with someone who likes space and black holes. And be sure to check out my new Lovecraftian analog horror channel, The Office of Extra Dimensional Intelligence, linked in the pinned comment. The first episode came out last night, so be sure to give it a watch in a dark room. And hey, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy. Sagittarius A, the movie, coming soon.